Um, so, you've probably pulled this out of the bag, um, put it all together, and had a good blow, and maybe it's been squeaking. Um, I don't know if mine will squeak, but it's, it's pretty hard for me to make it squeak these days. But you might get a... A sound like that, and <laughs> naturally you're going to be a bit disappointed. Ah, but this is where the challenges come in. So, there's a good technique, there's a start technique. Uh, once again, it's about developing the, the, the basics, the foundation, and once you've got the solid foundation, um, then you can move and you can progress. Now, my suggestion would be, and it's, it's the number one criteria, is take your instrument, pull it apart. So all we're going to use is the top section. And the trick is we need to get a nice, smooth tone out of this. It might not be the nicest pitch, but what you have to get is just a nice, smooth tone. So it's a matter of placing the mouthpiece in your mouth. I'll show you that in close up and so forth in a minute. But effectively, you rest your teeth, front teeth, on the top part of the mouthpiece. Uh, just like that. When your teeth are there and they're comfortable, just wrap your lips around. And then it's a matter of blowing. Now, you've got to get these things started. And this is where I go back to the riding a bike. When you first hop on a bike, your old man or mum pushes you down the road and you're, you're, you're wobbling and wiggling all over the place. Um, you might be able to glide a bit. More than likely, you're going to fall off and it's going to take two or three times to do it. Um, this is very similar. As soon as you pick it up, it's going to squeak, it's going to make stupid sounds, it's going to disappoint you. <laughs> but if you set yourself a little goal, this is the number one, is to get the reed started with the vibrating. And once you have it vibrating, it's obviously going to make a pitch, and then it's about controlling that pitch. That then comes back to your lungs and your diaphragm. Um, hence, I'll say it again, your breathing is the significant part of this. So, my suggestion is, just use the top bit of the sax, um, position it in your mouth, and it's going to take a little bit of playing around. You're going to move it forward, move it backwards, you're going to blow, you're going to do all sorts of crazy things, and it ain't going to happen. But, if you keep working on it, once you get this tone, this is all you really need. Um, and so, straight away... So that's the tone, and with your good breathing, you're going to be able to hold that note. That's really, really where we're, what we're aiming for is you to be able to get that pitch and hold that note. Now, if it doesn't come in automatically, shift your mouth just a little bit. It might a little bit further and a little bit further out. There's also a technique to start the blowing, and this is what you've just got to practice. Once you get that technique, you should have it. Um, it will come back to you. Your mouth, at the moment, if, if you've never played a wind instrument before, your mouth muscles aren't going to be particularly strong. Your mouth is a muscle. The more you use it, it will um, develop the strengths, uh, it will develop the shape. The mouthpiece will suddenly feel comfortable in your mouth. You will know where to position your mouth, your teeth, your lips over the mouthpiece. Um, and so that's what we're going for. So it's going to take a bit of time. You know, it's not going to come naturally. Some will get it straight away. Um, but you've got to be able to do it on a consistent basis. So. It's a sort of. bit of a spitting but once you get the um the sound working then you'll start to figure out how much air needs to go through and obviously the better practice or the the, the more you use this the better you'll become at it um yeah it's just a, a, a technique that as i say it's it, it's going to take a bit of time but this is really the essence the that your your breath coming out over the reed and you want to be able to control that and 
hold it for a long, you know, as long as you can. If you can blow a 15 second note, that is just fantastic. So once more. If you can hold a tone like that, after this, it's just a matter of running your fingers up and down the, the sax and combining that with some beats and you'll be surprised what happens. talk a bit more about mouth positioning. Um, this is super vital because this is where it connects to your body. Um, all the air going through here has to be very consistent. Um, so what I find is that you almost roll your bottom lip out of it so that the, the reed sits flat on your on the bottom lip. I don't know if you can, can you see that? So it almost pulls out of it. Now, your mouth closes around here, and the, the, the trick is to keep your mouth relaxed. Um, it's got to stay firm but relaxed, and then your lips have to make a good seal right around the, um, the rest of the mouthpiece. This will stop any air escaping out of the side. Um, it'll direct all the airflow over the reed, but you can't stop the reed from vibrating, so the bottom lip is almost pulls out just a fraction and so that the the base or the bottom of the, the reed sits flat on your lip on the bottom part of your lip okay <laughs> um yep very important so that's going to take a wee bit of time to um to establish that feeling once you've got it when you start getting a tone, don't necessarily close your mouth up any harder than what it is. It's just got to remain consistently around there, and you will find that your muscles develop, uh, or the shape of your, you can control the shape of your mouth quite a lot more as time goes on. <laughs> Further to having your mouth relaxed on the mouthpiece, try and keep it sitting up a bit, um, or keep the unit sitting on a good angle. So if you can imagine the air's flowing out, and you don't want any breaks or any bends in, in, in the airflow. So don't tilt it too far down like that because you'll find you'll put a lot more pressure on the reed, not enough on top. So it's a matter of tilting it. it feels very comfortable and if you can imagine you want the ear flowing as smooth as possible through the um through the top of the sax uh that'll have a a big impact once again that's something you're going to have to just work it out yourself um ultimately your mouth is relaxed your lungs are relaxed your body's relaxed the ears relaxed and um, when you get that reed actually vibrated and the tone up don't compress your lips because you'll notice that that'll start to pinch the sound. Um, so it's a matter of having your lips almost as relaxed as you can, but still keeping a, a decent seal around the mouthpiece. And you'll find once you've got the sound, then you have to just keep 
getting that tone and practice to get it even. making the vibrato sound or the growling sound, your lips aren't changing. That's being done with your throat and your sort of mouth. So your lips remain consistently on the mouthpiece. Um, you can pinch your lips once you get better and that'll give you a slightly different pitch. But in the, in the early days, you'll find that it'll actually constrict the airflow. And that in itself is gonna make the, the saxophone sort of stutter and jerk and squeak. So, okay, so when you're comfortable at getting a basic tone, and then you can put on some beats, and I'm just going to go back to the basic shuffle drum beat, and try and keep these tones going along to this beat. So. beat now that's a basic exercise that's going to help you follow the beat on any given day you'll have to get in there then you can play with it it's a little bit hard to do much with that high-pitched tone, but when you put the rest of the saxophone on it, effectively it's the same thing, you're gonna take that beat and just walk through that street. stress here once again standing up and being relaxed now what a lot of you are going to do is try to learn too much in a short space of time um, this is all about keeping your fingers your mouth your body relaxed um, that'll give you the tones and it'll give you the, the the sweet sounds you're looking for so a suggestion here is to put on some beats follow the basic line don't do anything too complicated up and down the scales just and then back down. Now, when you're getting that, then stop and make sure your body and your breathing and your, your, your breath control is all in a good position. Um, a lot of you are gonna just play too much and you're gonna strain your mouth, you're gonna get frustrated. So, if you get some basic beats down, remember to pause, it's not a race. So, pause in between, then get your breathing. Recheck, just think about your, your, your filling up your lungs before you start. Um, it's that sort of thing. So it's a, it's a little bit of a process. Um, as you develop that process, you can obviously get into it a lot quicker. But in the short term, when you're, when you're learning, you're going to have to actually go through the, the, the little frustrating steps that, you know, each, each of the times you do this, you're learning something. You're, you're banking something in your memory. Um, another thing I always find is if you try and learn too much in any given day, uh, you just fade out. So by letting your, by giving it up or only playing for 20 minutes a day is, is probably more beneficial than trying to play for two hours one day and getting frustrated. After 20 minutes you can't get that frustrated but you will learn and then put it down, come back another day, pick it up and a lot of that stuff you have already learned subconsciously is filtering itself through your fingers, your, your lungs, your head. So Try some basic beats, just like this. Remember, slow down and relax. Once you get in that tone, 
and you can start to follow a beat. Now these are just basic little exercises, just sort of sequential exercises that really this is what it's about and the more confident you get at doing this, um, the more confident you get to be to play to, to, to some more sort of funky beats. So I'll try this. Remember to, to stand up. It's, it's, it's a process. Get your breathing right, your hands relaxed, and don't play too many notes in any given session. Remember to breathe. So maybe if you do something like this, just make up basic patterns. So I'm going to talk about the actual tones you can get, which holes you're going to use. Now this is pretty vital. Um, it's all vital. But what we have effectively is six holes on the front and a hole on the back. Uh, so I'll just quickly go through the notes you can, the actual tones you can get. <laughs> Now, right, so what we've got is basically six going up, we have one on the back. The highest note is all fingers off. Then you have a half note, um, just with the back finger on. It's a sort of flat note, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. And then following through there, thumb on the back. Right, so that's the range of um, tones you can produce. Now what I'm going to say is really quite important. And as a learner, everything I'm playing here that you're hearing, I am using one hole on the back, one thumb on the back, three fingers here, but this one I always play as a double note. Now I'll talk a little bit more about the blues later on, that's a, um, it's a sort of scale thing. Um, you can play it, but I suggest you get used to just using those two fingers, because everything you've heard me play, and everything you'll hear me play, is using that combination, so from um, six, Five, and then you raise those two. Don't play that note. It's a flattish note and it makes it for a strange sound. So it's usable, but uh, for, the, for, the, for the remainder of when you're learning, stick away from that one. It's just a confusing one. So always bring one, two, that, that sequence. And then the other ones. And now the, the note on the back just your thumb on the back is also another flat note, so stick away from that. So you either have 
all your fingers off the back or one thumb and then you start basically down like that so now that gives it a, a, a bit more of a bluesy scale and I'll talk about that a little bit later so that's um that's pretty critical stick to that sequence one lift those two put those two back don't play that note stick away from it for the um foreseeable future down the track I can show you some other stuff to do with that note but for the style of music you want to play you want that bluesy sort of sound um and by taking that note out then you've got it and same with all the fingers off and then the thumb on the back go straight from all fingers off to the thumb on the back and the four, first finger so don't play that note there because once again that's another sort of flattish note that just makes it it's an awkward note to play gives you an awkward sound and what actually happens when you start playing those notes is you tend to lose the timing because it's, it's an off tone um, so I'm going to repeat it once more one two three four five so yes all right hand positioning um that's quite important um the suggestion is relax hands um as you bring your fingers up a good practice to get into is to don't take them too far up if I'm playing, I'm trying to show you stuff, and so that's probably why I'm doing it. But the, the closer they are to the instrument, you don't have to go searching for the holes when you're putting them back down. So if you're going from here, you've got to go searching almost for the holes. Um, so try and get into a habit of keeping your fingers relatively close to the tube. Um, yeah, that's a, a good tip. Um, when you're playing the high note, which is all fingers off, that's where the hook comes in um so if you watch my hands i'll try and turn around i try i sort of tend to roll my hand down a little bit um because your thumb's got to come off but you don't want it too far away if you want to be able to stick it straight back on as you close onto that top hole so Work on keeping your hands in a nice position. Don't let your fingers get too far away from the from the tube. As low down as you can is really what you want. It gives you a lot more um, dexterity between uh, the notes. You can roll your fingers faster. You're not searching for them and so forth. Um, yep, so practice that. Keep your hands ca comfortable and figure out where the, the holes are. And as long as you're only lifting a little way off, you can get it back there quite easily, which gives you a the ability to change interchange between notes so much quicker all right so 